Imagine a baby's head being delivered smoothly during birth, but then suddenly the shoulders get stuck. This is called shoulder dystocia, and while it sounds scary, knowing what it is and how it's managed can make a huge difference. Today we're breaking it down in simple terms. From this image we can see that the problem is usually caused by impaction of the anterior shoulder against the maternal symphysis. Remember that this is a bony impaction. Shoulder dystocia is unpredictable, but some factors increase the chances. First up, we have the pre-labor risk factors, including patients who had a previous shoulder dystocia, macrosomia, diabetes, a BMI greater or equal to 30, and induction of labor. Maternal diabetes is the most important risk factor to look out for. It increases the risk of shoulder dystocia by two to four times as much. Therefore, well-controlled diabetes in pregnancy is vital. Intrapartum risk factors include a prolonged first stage of labor, secondary arrest, a prolonged second stage of labor, oxytocin use, and an instrumental delivery. Having said that, shoulder dystocia can still happen even when no risk factors are present. Now, how do we recognize shoulder dystocia? There are four telltale signs that allow us to recognize shoulder dystocia during delivery of the head. The first is a difficult delivery of the face and chin. The next is the turtleneck sign, which refers to the head remaining tightly applied to the vulva or even retracting, bobbing in and out just like a turtle's head. Another sign is failure of restitution. Restitution refers to the normal turning of the baby's head by 90 degrees once delivered to assist the delivery of the shoulders. Lastly, you would notice a failure of the shoulders to descend. So if you see these signs, the obstetric team should be on the alert for a possible shoulder dystocia. Now, probably the most important part, the management. Shoulder dystocia is one of the most serious obstetric emergencies. We've got an acronym called HELPER to help all healthcare professionals act fast and remember all the steps. Let's break it down. So H is for HELP. Managing shoulder dystocia is a team effort. We need to assertively state, this is a shoulder dystocia, for everyone in the room to be aware of what we are dealing with. Like we said, this is an obstetric emergency and we need all hands on deck. E, evaluate for episiotomy. An episiotomy should be considered to give more space for internal maneuvers. But remember, this is a bony obstruction, so an episiotomy is not going to help to directly free the shoulder. L, legs, MacRoberts maneuver, and P, suprapubic pressure. So the first maneuver is the MacRoberts maneuver. It works 90% of the time. It involves flexing and abducting the mother's legs. Ideally, you have two individuals holding either leg. It helps increase the anteroposterior diameter of the pelvis to free the baby's shoulders. It's important that the woman is laid completely flat, so the pillow should be removed before performing the maneuver, unlike what we've got going on in this image. Now, suprapubic pressure refers to firm pressure applied just above the pubic bone on the side of the fetal back to push down on the posterior aspect of the anterior shoulder of the baby. Ideally, this is performed by a separate team member, unlike what is being portrayed in this image again. Now, to understand where the back is, you must look at the direction the baby's head is facing and assume the back is on the opposite side, of course. So in this case, the baby's head is facing us and the midwife is applying downward and lateral pressure on the opposite side. When every maneuver is performed, someone in the team is trying to deliver the baby by applying axial traction to the head that is traction in line with the fetal spine. This is performed for approximately 30 seconds, and if it doesn't work, we move on to the next maneuver. Next, we've got E, enter, signifying to enter the vagina for the internal maneuvers. First, we've got the wood screw maneuver, which involves applying pressure on the posterior aspect of the anterior shoulder and on the anterior aspect of the posterior shoulder to turn the baby. Then we've got the reverse wood screw. This involves applying pressure on the posterior aspect of the posterior shoulder. And Reuben too, which involves pressure on the posterior aspect of the anterior shoulder. The order is not strict, and of course space is an issue. 
So whichever you manage to do, do it. Then we've got R, remove the posterior arm. Essentially here we grasp the wrist of the posterior arm and try to deliver it gently out. Some obstetricians prefer starting with this internal maneuver. Lastly, we've got to roll the patient on all fours. So essentially we try performing these same maneuvers, but this time in an all fours position. If that doesn't work, we start over until we manage. Now in some rare cases, if we still do not manage to deliver the shoulders, we can opt for a cladotomy, which involves fracturing the baby's clavicle to reduce the bisarcomial diameter and deliver the baby. The Zavanelli maneuver, which involves pushing the baby's head back inside the uterus and performing a cesarean section to deliver the baby. Or else a symphysiotomy, dividing mater the maternal symphysis pubis to allow for more space. Of course, these are all last resort maneuvers and are associated with severe morbidity and mortality. Once you've gotten over dealing with the trauma of shoulder dystocia, it's not over. You need to look out for the associated complications. Postpartum hemorrhage occurs in 11% of cases. Perineal tears is also common, occurring in 3.8% of cases. And due to the excessive traction on the baby, there is also a risk of brachial plexus injuries, which should be appropriately checked for. If you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe and share it with anyone studying obstetrics or preparing for exams. And let me know in the comments below what other topics you would like me to cover. Thanks for watching!